Thank you for this very important testimony that you're offering. Uh, it's invaluable. There's nothing like the truth. And we're doing okay on time. Uh, so I don't have to ask anyone to hurry up. We have plenty of time. Um, our next panel is on the, our three set of panelists, the Pedro Pan experience. There are many myths surrounding Pedro Pan uh, in the outside world for those who know anything about Pedro Pan, but one of the, the, the governing myths for those who know anything but really know nothing is that all Pedro Pan children were wealthy and Catholic. <laughs> and that was not the case. Oh, and white. Wealthy, Catholic, and white. So we have in our panel um, Maria de la Milera to talk about the Catholic Pedro Pan experience. And uh, She'll be followed by Eloy Cepero to speak about the Protestant Pedro Pan experience, and Marcos Kerbel to talk about the Jewish Pedro Pan experience. Hello. Hi, for those of you who do not know me, my real name is Maria de Los Angeles Fajarda Miño González Monteagudo is now a Baño Rojas, also known as Maria de la Milena. <laughs> I come from a family that was not rich. It's not wealthy. It's just a regular family in Cuba. My father was born in Pinar del Rio. He comes from a very heavily military family, although he was not a military person himself. My mother comes from Placetas, Las Villas, and she's the great, great, great grandniece of General Chucho Monteudo, a hero in the in Cuban independence war. And I was born in Oriente. The land of Batista, the land of Fidel Castro. You couldn't ask for more. But anyways, I take ownership of my homeland. Anyways, <laughs> I came to the hard reality of the revolution when I was 12 years old, when four young men whose lives had been spared due to my father's diligence, because they were involved with the revolution and my father saved their lives. And those four men came to my house, ransacked my house, and were looking to arrest my father, who saved their lives. From that time on, my life was a chaos. My father had to flee to Havana, and I, we, the family, followed afterwards. For three years, we didn't go to school because we were afraid we were going to get my father to us. And I dedicated myself to my studies in music. And that's why I became a teacher at the age of 14. But what happened is when I went to get my degree as a professor, they realized, hey, this girl's not going to school. So they tell me, you're leaving for the campsite. You're going to go on and work in a in, uh, in campo. And so, at that time, I was one of those cases, it was not the CIA who went to my house and told my mom to send me over here. It was me who just knelt before my mother and asked her, please, get me out of here. I do not think I would have been able to be in a good state of mind if I had stayed in Cuba. I was so much against the government and the regime that I knew. If I stayed in Cuba, I would end up in jail, or maybe in Masora. And that would have been really sad. So I was blessed, and I was sent to Miami, Florida. When I arrived, I had a sister from my father's first marriage, I told you. My father was my father. He married five times. <laughs> so from the first marriage, I had my sister. And she was in transit to go to New York because actually her husband's family was in New York. But she had to wait till her husband came because he was detained and was not allowed to live with her. So she was in Miami at the time. And when I came in, instead of going to the campament, I was, sent, I was given to my sister on a temporary basis until she continued her flight to uh, New York. In that meantime, my mother was trying to get um, 
uh, to talk to the sisters who were uh, running Leston Akut, which was a school that I attended when I was in, in Cuba. And the sisters of Leston, I told her, well, you know, if you, if you need a place for your, your, your daughters to be, they offer us to go to either Mexico, where they had a, a school there, or to go to California, where they had a school for señoritas. So, they might, you know, we, we gave information to the archdiocese that archdiocese arranged for us to, go, my sister and I, I came with a younger sister, to go to California. Once we get to Los Angeles, we learn that we cannot be at the house of señoritas because we're not 18 years old yet. So at that time, then the diocese in Los Angeles told us, you can either go to a foster home or you go to an orphanage. If you go to a foster home, we don't assure that you're going to be with your sister. So I said, there's no decision to be made. We're going to an orphanage because I didn't want to get it separated from my sister. So we ended up in Maryville, and I am blessed to have two of my former roommates here, Rosa and Yara, who are here. Thank you for coming, and I'm welcome. <laughs> and um, I spent there four years. Uh, it was not easy. If I tell you it was easy, I'm lying. It was a shock in the beginning. I came from a very sheltered family, very sheltered life. And then all of a sudden here I was with girls, um, there were only about 15 of us Cubans, uh, Pedro Pons there, but the rest were girls who had been having a very difficult life, who came from very dysfunctional homes. And I had never been exposed to the situations that some of these girls had. So in the beginning to me, it was kind of a shock, and I didn't communicate very well with anybody, except for those of us who were Cuban. Um, because I, I just couldn't assimilate all of this information that was new to me. So, and the nuns were very patient with me and really helped me a lot. They were the daughters of charity who run the, the orphanage. And they told me, the only way you can survive is by exchanging information and teaching each other about each other's life. You can teach them that there are normal families uh, who have normal childhood, and where life could be close to perfect. But they're going to have to teach you all of those things that you're going to need to know once you get out of here. Because I was very naive. So that's exactly what we did. I learned a lot of things from those girls, and they learned, hopefully, some things from me. And to tell you the truth, I give God thanks every day of my life, because I spent those four years in Meridale. Because the wealth of knowledge that I received during those four years have been my trademark in life. And they really have helped me be who I am today. They helped me understand what my mission in life is, and it is to help others. That's what makes me happy. And you know, that is, that is something that you don't learn in Harvard. That's not something that you learn in University of Miami. <laughs> this is something you learn in the University of Life. And I had the opportunity to learn it right there, those four years in Maryville. I grew tremendously, I matured tremendously, and as I said, I give thanks to God every day for giving me the experience, and I give thanks to God every day for my parents making the tough decision. So thank you very much. <laughs>